Hey guys, today we have more F12 tricks such as this pair from here. Normally you would have to rotate and then pair them up like this, but instead you can save a rotation and do something faster, which is like this. So how this works is when you do this, you're basically just picturing that this is actually this pair where um, you're gonna split them up like this and then solve them. Except instead of doing an M prime, you would start this pair by doing R. So that's just a wide R move. And then you would solve that pair as usual and end with a wide R move to get this layer back down as well. And you can also do this from the back. So here you would picture that you're solving this case. So then you would start with a wide move and end with a wide move. This ELG is best saved for last slot because it's hard to look ahead when you have the wide moves. Now we have this pair, which again normally would take a rotation such as this to pair them up like that. But instead from here you could just solve it like this. So this is actually the exact same idea as the previous one. So what you're going to do is do M prime and picture it like this. So the pair that you're actually solving would be something like this. So in my previous F2 L tricks video, I talked about if you get this pair from the back slot, the best way to solve it is to ignore this pair being solved and just pair these one up with R U2 R prime and then insert them. And then finally at the end, put this pair back in. So in this case, we would do the exact same thing, but start with a wide move. That way the edge ends up here. So wide move, and then just the same idea. Now, if you get this pair from the front, you can do the same thing. So that would look like this. So if you get this case facing this side and specifically have the slot as a front slot, then what you could do is rotate in either direction and solve it like this. But instead you can avoid the rotation by recognizing that from here, you can do F and that actually sets these up and you can insert it right to here because the slot now belongs right here. You can insert it with R U to R prime and then undoing the F prime. Now for this specific case, if you don't like this way of doing F, well, you should learn it. How it's done is with your right index finger, but also have your right pinky underneath the S slice so that doesn't move. Otherwise, sometimes you could get two layers turning at once. But if you don't want to do it that way, there is a pretty good way as well, which is just starting with R prime and then doing the same thing. So F, pair these up to right here and then undo. So this again faster, and the version with R prime faster. Now, if you just do F for this case, this actually is just one special case out of a whole class of cases that can be solved by starting with an F to solve your front left slot. Jaden McNeil likes to talk about this a lot, and I'll give you an intro, but he has a lot more ideas about this than I do. So the reason that works in this case is because this edge is misoriented. And so what that means is just you can't insert it into here using L or R or U moves because it ends up flipped. And if that is the case, I have a whole video explaining how you can use this idea to help you predict whether or not you need to do a cube rotation. And there's a lot of ways you can save on recognition time and look ahead time using that. So how edge orientation is changed is usually by doing F moves or of course cube rotations. But in this case, we don't need to change the orientation of the edge to solve it. We keep the edge out of the F layer and we instead change the orientation of the spot it needs to go into. So I can have this edge in any of these three spots and do the F move and I'll have this solvable rotationless. So uh, the way I showed was from here and then you can just easily pair them up because that happens to put the corner and edge in a very good spot. But I could do a similar thing from right here and as you'll see it works out really well as well. So I change the orientation of the slot and then I can pair these up and then I can just put it in the slot like this. And another example is if I had the edge over here which is the only other place it can be I can do F and then pair these two up which takes a little bit longer so how that would work is by pairing them up like this and then pairing them up again. I don't know if that's the best way, but that does show the idea of how this works. Now there is another way of solving this by putting the edge here before you do F. And in general, you shouldn't do this, but this is just one special case where it works. And that's because this corner has white on top, which lends to good solutions with having a flipped edge. So when you do this, then the slot is flipped, but then I also flip this edge. So I have to treat this like a flipped edge when I solve this case. So essentially flipped edge, corner behind it like this, I'm solving this case next, which can be solved with sledge. So from here, this is the same thing. If my F move moved this edge here, then I'd have to treat it like a flipped edge to solve these two. So I can do sledgehammer, and then that just happens to put it right at the right spot already, so I would do another F prime afterwards. If that last example didn't make sense, that's because it's a special case on top of a new concept. Just make sure that you learn how that new concept works to see if you want to use it more, and that's just using F to help you solve your FL slot when you have a misoriented edge. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned something new. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.